Hi, welcome to Draw My Life. Um, I'm going to share with you my story that I've had over the past 23 years. So here we begin. So I was born on 9th March 1990, during which, um, while my mom was having me, the doctor couldn't actually tell my gender whether I was a boy or girl, so that was pretty odd. So my I live in a really big family with my grandma, my grandpa, my cousins, my aunt and my uncle. Sadly, my grandma actually passed away the year I was born, but she gave me the name Adora and I couldn't be thankful enough. Three years later, my brother was born. Um, yeah, he was quite a quiet child and I can't really remember much of him when he was a little baby. But yeah, he sure is a good brother. A few years later, we actually moved out to our apartment in Tampines Street 21, where I started schooling as a kindergarten child. And yeah, so I had my mom, my dad, and Barney to keep me company. During kindergarten, I actually made new friends. I remember this boy who was kind enough to give me a ruler on his birthday, and he was actually quite cute. So I always had trouble spelling the word aeroplane, I have no idea why. So yeah. During kindergarten too, I also stole the role of the queen in Sunny Lowatama, which I'm not that proud of now. But yeah, so the reason actually why I actually wanted to steal the role was because the king who the boy who actually played the role as a king was quite cute. So I went to school one day dressed up uh, with my pretty dress and heels, short heels of course, and the, the teacher actually gave me a shot during one of the rehearsals and I snitched the role. Yay! <laughs> so my uncle then dated this really pretty lady called Michelle. She um, was one of she, she is one of the most amazing person I've ever met. She always answers my questions, my questions that I had. One of the wise questions that I asked her was, where do babies come from? And she brought me to her room, explained to me how babies are made, and on top of that, she actually allowed me to play with her hair, play makeup with her, and that was fun. So when I was five too, I actually started cooking my own my meals. The first meal that I cooked for myself was tom yum noodles. Um, I actually had to stand on stools to cook because I was too short and my mom supervised me so I not. So a few years later we actually sold our apartment in Tampines to shift over to uh, Serangoon. Uh, but I remember being really upset because my uncle was just staying beneath us. So we shifted over to our aunt's place at Serangoon North and had a room for our family of four. Well, I loved it there mainly because my cousins and their Dalmatian. We spent a lot of time playing at the playground, having lots of fun together. Plus, uh, I had the best uh, spring chicken and rojak just down the kopitiam below. I also began schooling at CHIJ OLGC and I had the best adopted sister ever called Jillian. So we then shifted again to gardens, Serangoon Gardens, where we moved over as a whole family. We also had a big area for our pets. I had seven chinchillas back then, three huskies, Gentor, Louie and Sun Sun. So my cousin had rabbits and two rabbits and loads of hamsters. So the best time of my years, my childhood years were definitely spent in gardens because um, we spend most of our time playing soccer in the rain with our dogs, taking my dogs out for a walk, and spending most of our time, most of my time, with my friends at the playground, uh, right outside of CHIG or GC Burgley Drive. So it was pretty fun back then. So when I reached um, thirteen years old, where I started my secondary school life. We decided to move back to our place in Sengkang, which back then I have never heard of and it sounded really odd to me. And I had no friends um, who lived in Sengkang. So uh, thankfully, a bunch of them actually shifted back to Sengkang. And of course, I started schooling at SJC, where most of my primary school friends went to as well. So I was not alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, my journey in Sengkang has been pretty amazing. I actually had my have my own dog uh, given to me by my cousin Belinda. Uh, chocolate has been my awesome companion over the past few years. So here comes the most amazing part of my life. 
secondary school life. So I played lots of sports during secondary school, basketball, even though I looked like a minion while playing it, I never stopped. Gina and I would actually play at one of the basketball courts near our school and yeah. So I started table tennis. Um, uh, Geraldine, who actually is the vice captain of my team and I was captain, we actually made really good doubles. And yeah, I also took part in sport heats. So I sprinted for 100 to 200 meters and I got fourth place for one of this year, for one of those years. So I was also being appointed a counselor, which means prefect, and got, which got me very disciplined with myself. And yeah, most importantly, uh, I met the most amazing, amazing bunch of people uh, called the Goon Crew, comprises of 11 girls, amazing ladies for now, uh, by now. And yeah. That's how our journey went during secondary school days. So yeah, so after which, after all levels, I actually went over to Nian Polytechnic to study, to pursue nursing. And I met the most amazing people again from the group called WAPO in sports camp. So from there, I actually met Tin, who is known as Tik Sheng. I mean, you guys know him as Tik Sheng, but now he's been called Tin. So yeah. And I only knew him after a DND that we had for sports camp. So I spent a lot of time online on MSN with uh, my friends, chatting with them. A group of them, Mark, Madeline, Geraldina, Zoe, Ken, Jin, Gerald. You guys were amazing and I really truly miss you guys a lot. So we spent most of our time together as a group in the library, watching movies, studying and mostly cracking up with lots of nonsense. I miss those moments. Yeah. So during Nian, I actually signed up with Tech Rugby, but my journey only lasted for a few months because I came home bruised up and with my gum slit and my results were pretty poor. So then I knew I had to quit rugby and pay more attention to my studies. But, and I also joined this club called the Red Cross Humanitar Humanitarian Network. True and behold, I actually uh, got the position as a uh, president and ran a couple of blood donation drives which did really well for the both years that I ran it. So yeah, pretty proud of myself over the past few years. Ah, uh, well, time flies. So yeah, how uh, team and I met, you know. So on the 9th of December 2007, after nine months of knowing Tik Sheng, um, well, he followed me secretly back home and made his presence known only at the bus interchange at Sengkang. It was pretty late that night and he took the MRT back with me then and the bus back with me. It was bus 119 and I was, while he was sitting next to me, I was feeling really nervous. I could also sense his um, nervousness, which I could feel it in my bones, so yeah. So he sat me down at a bus stop, I know right, it's so cliche, but yeah, he sat me at a bus stop and asked if I would like to give a shot with him and I just kept giggling throughout the whole conversation that he, yeah, he actually confessed, sort of, what was it called, confession? Yeah. So two days later, he actually flew to Dubai, so it was quite upsetting for me because I knew I had to spend Christmas alone, I mean, normally you would want to spend it with your loved one, wouldn't you? So yeah. But I did not, thankfully. I spent it with my friends from Polly. Uh, we actually put together a party at Jin's place. And that was where the surprise came by. Um, he surprised me with a bouquet of tulips in purple, my favourite colour, and made a really sweet video message for me. So that was one of, that was probably the most amazing Christmas I've ever had, even though he wasn't around. So yeah. Christmas for me in 2007. So of course like every relationship, there are its ups and downs. So we had lots of ups but quite a fair bit of downs. But the most important thing I feel is to actually work things out with each other because nothing is perfect but we just learn how to have to learn how to embrace each other's beauty. So on November 20th, 2011, um, while enjoying the fireworks at Hong Kong Disneyland, Tim actually proposed to me, and I was just I was just shocked because it was in front of a whole lot of crowd. But I said yes eventually, and yeah, you 
guys know how the story continues from there so yeah so just be happy with each other and I'm glad I have team yeah love you baby so that's the end of the story and yeah see you again